Recently on the channel, I've been hitting three wood particularly well. But being a golfer, I want to hit it better. So could this new expensive shaft be the answer? Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here guys. First things first, we're gonna get straight into it today. I cannot wait to see if this concoction works. You see guys, on the channel recently, I've been hitting three wood pretty much very, very well. I have had an injured knee, so I've been hitting it more than maybe I would do normally. And the three wood I'm using, I actually kind of fell into a little bit. This is the Titleist TSI 3 three wood, and I have it set at slightly lower than 15 degrees, around 13 and a half degrees. It has a hazardous RDX smoke 6.0, 70 gram low spin shaft in there. Enter graphite design ADDI7 for about 300 pounds more. Will this make this go potentially even better? So that's what we're going to find out. We're going to swap them over. If I put the key in, which I'm hoping I did. I must have put the key in. I'm not that much of an idiot. Yes. Yes. So we're going to set it on the same settings. And guys, I know I should probably do this on a launch monitor. I could, in fact, definitely do it on a launch monitor and test them both. But I wanted to do it out here on the golf course because if you saw my video the other day, you will know that next week's a big week for me. We're playing Kings Barnes and St. Andrews off of C1. Tell me it fits, it must fit. I really thought that wasn't gonna fit then and this whole video would have been a waste of time. But luckily enough, it does. So let's get this on there. And actually this isn't a new shaft. I know I've put new in the title. It's actually a really old shaft that I got fitted for years ago in funnily enough, a Titleist three wood, right. So we are here at Woolley Park Golf Club today. I'm playing with Mr. Fox, the best man. And we're just off the yellow tees, just having a bit of fun. So I'm gonna see just how this expensive upcharge exotic shaft, how it feels and how it works. Into the wind here. Oh, wow. How good was that? That was really nice, that, mate. This, uh, this could, um, hmm. This, um, yeah, this could work, actually. Um, Wow. So guys, if you are new to the channel, then welcome. Please do consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss the daily golf related content that I bring to you guys. And also make sure you ring the notification bell because I've heard a lot of people aren't getting notified at one o'clock when the videos go live. So make sure you do that. Any luck, mate? <laughs> so guys, also make sure you do get in the comments below because you know it's so important that you are a part of these videos. And let me know what's the most expensive upgrade you've had on golf clubs. Is it a shaft like I'm using now? Or is it something else? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I still can't quite get over the feeling and the sound of that opening tee shot. Oh, wow. How good was that? That was remarkable. Like I said, guys, I have been hitting that three wood particularly well anyway. And I used to actually use this shaft in the three wood, which I do still have, in the hybrid. And I also had the driver as well. You might recognize the orange shaft. I think Jordan Spieth had it in the driving iron. Tiger used it in his driver for a while. And this is a particularly good tee shot into the wind, even off those yellow tees. Let's see if we can attack and maybe make a birdie. Oh, be good. Go on then. Oh, go in. Ah! Oh! I really, 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 really enjoyed that. And isn't it funny how something new in the bag kind of gives you a bit of, not a honeymoon period, but it gives you a bit of a lift. Like I'm really, do you find that? Yeah. When I get new clubs, I'll, I get quite excited to use them. To be yeah, honest. it's not even a new club, it's just a, it's an old shaft that I've had before, but... It's just, it's just a, mm, it's been a nostalgia then for you. Oh, nostalgia. Can't spell that, but... And I must admit, it has got me thinking about... I know I've done a couple of videos recently about using a driver, not using a driver, using a mini driver. Imagine a mini driver with that shaft in it. Oh, wow. Um, it actually checked up really quickly, but it was bang online that for going in, so... Uh, I'm not withdrawing my go-in shouts. And we all know when it gets up to St. Andrews and King's Barnes, it's gonna come down to this for the scoring. Enjoyment factor, not so much. That actually spun a lot. 
So guys, get in the comments below as well. I know I'm asking you to comment a lot today, but I just want a bit of a discussion with you. What do you think about expensive exotic shafts, upcharge shafts? I know I have done videos on these in the past, but I'm desperate to know what you offered you an extra 10 yards off the tee or more accuracy. Would you take them? And would you spend the money on them? And if you birdie the first hole like that, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Just, just get me on the first tee at the old course. Just get me on it. And you see, guys, this shaft isn't perfect. It's actually got a few kind of battle wounds on it and a few scars. It's got the obligatory kind of bag wear there. So I might be tempted to put an axle wrap on it like I've done with the driver, like you've all seen. But I mean, in fairness, the hazardous isn't a bad shaft. Now, I was fitted into this. So am I a bit daft changing them? Again, let me know. Get in the comments. Fox is just holding absolute worldy as well. And I'm sorry, the camera wasn't running. First time for everything, mate, isn't <laughs> See you the day. You're quite disappointed that doesn't do anything, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, can't believe John's disabled that. To be fair, I asked him why, and he said for idiots like you. I was, I was about to say, Fresh I, out. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, this is a really interesting hole, because especially off the forward tees, we can sort of get it over there and get near the green. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. Do I upgrade the head cover next week as well? Hmm. Oh, that's just glorious, mate. Really good. So ideally the tee would be over there, but we're gonna steal as much room as potentially we can. I'm actually gonna tee up quite high as well and try and get it turning over these trees. Will this shaft help me get that? Usually it's driver here, isn't it, to try and get it on. I don't think you're gonna make the green. You don't think I'm gonna make the green? I don't think I'm going to make the green. Sorry, mate. That's on it. Mate. That is on it. Got to be. Can't be far away with that. Can't one. be. I love it. I like it. And you see, it's funny because both those tee shots, they felt remarkable. And I've looked on the face. And the first one was out the heel, the second one was a touch heely as well, actually. And you can see the wear marks on this face are kind of scattered towards the heel. So that is telling me that that's obviously where my miss is. And that's why Titleist fitted the weight in the heel there, because it helps maintain a little bit more ball speed from there. I've also got to say as well, has everyone seen the new Titleist irons that are coming out? We've seen kind of snippets of them on Twitter and Instagram. The T100S in black look incredible so there's videos of those coming i've got a fitting book for the title list very very soon to get my hands on them so make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see that and you haven't done already i think that's re really good i hope I it is it's actually that flag position it's a bit if it were left it'd be no good would it but it's a no bit i think it's good idea. that i'm sorry but look at that I told you won't make green knob <laughs> So that was bang on line. It's actually another quite difficult flag location today as well, but I don't think that'd be much different with a driver. Driver would probably have been too much here actually as well. So this is gonna be quite interesting. We've got this chip for an eagle, a big bird. I feel like a bad coach here because this is where I'd tell you to put. But I feel like I've got more chance making it with the wedge. Nope. Couldn't have played it much better, I enjoyed that. Didn't check as much as I wanted, but we have that for another birdie. Right, come on. Birdie, birdie start. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. This is turning into a great day. <laughs> so we're gonna play another couple of holes. We've got a long uphill par four, which, um, I can't wait for, but we're going to go three wood again. Then we've got a downhill par five. And I'm thinking three wood, three wood might even get there. What can we finish this video? We're two under through two. I think three under is doable with the par five. I also quite like the, um, the colour of it. I think that helps sometimes, doesn't it? A little right to lefter, I think, just down the fairway. Bit of a bomb. That is... I'm going to keep saying it, that's remarkable. 
This is definitely coming to St Andrews, definitely. 100% and you're not getting past that. Bom, bom, bom. What happens when the putts go down? <laughs> up, 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 up. You see, the thing that I'm finding really interesting, and I do remember this from using this shaft all those years ago, is that I feel like I can bomb it downwind and get it up in the air, but I also feel like I can play it down into the wind and it not affect it too much. That's a huge thing when you are talking shafts. Everything all right, mate? Now, that's a particularly long way, especially for a three-wood. I can't believe it's actually kicked left off the fairway. I feel like some of these bounces aren't really doing me that much justice, but uh, right, we're going to chip a little seven out there. We've got half set in the bag still, um, but I'm going to take full set up there because you guys very much slapped me on the wrists for saying that I was going to take a half set to the home of golf. And looking back, it was a little bit silly, so I apologise. Right, I could probably get a nine iron there, couldn't I? So after looking at it, Bit of a fly lie, downwind. I'm gonna try and hit a hard nine. See how the knee holds up. That could be big actually, sit. Yeah, that's okay, quite happy with that. So this is where we find out if it's one of those days where everything just flies in where you wish you were playing some kind of competition or for money with your friends or if it's just another normal day. I think this goes left to right and then straightens out a bit. Needed hitting, had the line. That's tailed off dramatically. Well, I wasn't really hoping for this for par. On the back of that. Nice tester though. Easy. Ah. So one hole left, and this is a downhill butt into the wind par five. So can I manipulate this ball flight, try and get it down a bit, get it running, and see if we can get on the green in two with two three woods. Would be quite interesting. Or quite uh, remarkable actually. Right, come on. Everything's working today. Let's try and get to three under. I do feel quite sorry for the hazardous shaft actually because it's done nothing wrong but that's golf isn't it lost child. yeah so this hole is 530 yards so we need an average go on foxy what do we need an average of to get there what is it? 533 uh, 250 two six, five. yeah into the wind but should be doable all right Can we get a bit of a stinger? Because that's what King's Barnes and the old course would be all about. I definitely need to re-grip this as well. This grip, this grip certainly seen better days. So I might get on that before I go. Well, that wind's up now. Hmm, a little bit turny. That's not going to be easy. Nothing's perfect, is it? That's certainly not what we wanted when trying to play the stinger. Disappointing. Where did you go? Left. Wow. Yep, took a bad kick as well, mate, that one, I think. Right, this is going to be an interesting one. There's absolutely no point shot tracer in this because it's like literally I need to go through those trees there. Got to hit a snapper fox, haven't we? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just clipped it. No fairness, pal. That's position eight for your next three would though. So maybe that's the honeymoon period over. Not quite as long as I would have enjoyed, but yeah. This is back in play. Oh, feathers. Thank you ever so much. All of a sudden this par five is quite a long proposition. I enjoyed that. Wonderful. 
Right, there's a chance. Well, I did think that that 2 iron was a bit high, actually. So we're just on this front edge here, and that's actually left quite a difficult chip shop. So a video that started so well. Chip shop? Chip shop, chip shop Dave. So a video that started so well. Like I've let myself down a bit, but if this goes in or goes close, all is forgiven. Sit down. Oh! Why were you so aggressive there? And all of a sudden, we've got a 30 foot up a par on a par five that we were hoping to make eagle on. Wonderful. Could be a lot worse, you're right. Come on. Have this in. Finish on a positive. So one bad tee shot there has cost us realistically. That's one under for four holes. And actually, I'm not too unhappy with that. So guys, there we are. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed that. Get in the comments below, guys. Should I use this expensive, exotic three-wood shaft? And is it the answer? And if it is the answer, what's the question? Because I feel like I'm looking for something that I don't necessarily need to be looking for. But then that's what golf's about, isn't it? That's what we all do. Guys, if you have enjoyed that, make sure you do smash that subscribe button below. Also, leave us a like so I know you're enjoying these videos. And get in the comments below and let's have a bit of a discussion on expensive exotic shafts guys apart from that i'll very much look forward to seeing you at the same time tomorrow and keep your eyes peeled for the saint andrews videos Oi! Definitely coming to St. Andrews, definitely, 100%.